Well, good morning. Good morning. Man. Amen. Good to be here in the house of the Lord. I'm going to be in the book of Revelation today. Revelation chapter number five. Revelation chapter number five will be where the text is found. And uh, <clears throat> let me give you that uh, page number. Uh, that'll be page 1,335 if you have an old Schofield Bible. Revelation chapter number five. And uh, uh, we will, uh, Sunday school, we've been on, uh, we've been going through the book of Revelation in Sunday school. We just hit chapter number 14 this morning. Uh, we finished up the chapter 13 talking about the, uh, the two beasts, the beast out of the sea and the beast out of the earth, uh, one political, one religious. Uh, and uh, now we're looking at the, you know, the triumphal uh, uh, lamb standing on Mount Zion with 144,000. <clears> but today, uh, I want to read uh, a verse of scripture to you uh, here in, in your hearing out of uh, Revelation chapter number 5. And uh, just uh, as a reminder, uh, since we're having the, you know, the pandemic and all of that, <clears throat> No uh, service tonight. We're having a Sunday morning service, and, and uh, we would say uh, welcome to all the folks out there who are watching uh, on the web, uh, and uh, welcome to the front row. We saved you a seat. Amen. It's good to have you here uh, with us. Amen. And uh, let's uh, read Revelation chapter 5 and look at verse number 9, if you will. Uh, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. And open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, uh, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings you have given us, Lord. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing us back to be in your house, and uh, we surely thank you, Lord, for uh, your son that came uh, into this world and gave his life that we might have life. Thank you, Lord, that you preserved the word that we might hear uh, these uh, words. I pray, Lord, that you might bless uh, the word now. May it find a lodging place in our hearts. May we leave better servants than when we came in. Save those that are lost and draw us closer unto thee. In Christ's name, for his sake, we do pray. Amen. Well, we find here a picture of uh, 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 the singing of the new song, uh, the living creatures, the elders, uh, uh, and it says uh, the four and twenty elders had fallen down, and now it said they sung a new song, uh, and listen to uh, what this song contains. Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people, and nation. Amen. I want to talk about uh, uh, redemption. Amen. Redemption, uh, that term, uh, uh, redeemed, uh, uh, and of course it's throughout the Word of God, but it means to be bought out. To be bought out. Amen. Now, uh, uh, you know, and, and you and I uh, were uh, in a place where we needed to be bought out. We were essentially in... Uh, uh, in the pawn shop, you know, the devil's pawn shop. The devil had us, and, and we were there, and the Lord redeemed us. Amen. He bought us out. You know, uh, uh, the pawnbroker has a, a long history going back uh, to uh, even ancient Greek and Roman times, and, and they have that symbol you probably all seen, the three balls, uh, you know, that hang, uh, uh, and there's meaning to that, you know, and it goes uh, uh, way, way back to ancient times. You see that uh, symbol, you know, there's a pawnbroker there. Most of us have probably been uh, in a pawn shop at one time or another. Uh, uh, you know, I remember there used to be one or there still is one, but the, uh, changed offices now. But the office where I used to work, uh, there was one across the street. And sometimes, uh, you know, at lunchtime, uh, I'd go over there and see what they had. Uh, most of the time, I was interested in uh, musical instruments. I want to see what kind of guitars and 
banjos and mandolins and that thing uh, uh, were in there and you know uh, they'd let me play and sometimes I might take somebody with me and we'd go over there and have a little fun during the lunchtime hour. Uh, uh, always good you know but they're always trying to sell me something. They, they always want to make a deal you know. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a good price on this uh, you know and uh, of course uh, you know very uh, occasionally I, I, I would buy something but uh, not very frequently but uh, uh, you know uh, this thing uh, about uh, being uh, uh, pond, uh, it, it, it's always uh, the same. You know, something that's in the pawn shop, uh, uh, you know, it, it, in order to get it out, you have to redeem it. You know, if you give the pawnbroker something uh, and you tell him, I want you to advance me money on that, he'll advance you money and he'll say, you know, do, do you want to sell it to me? That means it's mine for good. Or do you want to pawn it, you know, and, and come back and re redeem it uh, at another time? And if you don't go back after a certain period of time and get it, uh, then uh, it becomes his, you know. Uh, well, listen, uh, 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 people, mankind uh, uh, went into the devil's pawn shop when Adam and Eve uh, decided that they uh, uh, wanted to sin against God, amen. And the Shekinah glory of the Lord uh, uh, was taken away from them, and God cast them out of the garden. From that moment on, uh, we needed a redeemer. Amen. We needed a redeemer. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, these words kind of uh, demonstrate the magnificent grace of the Lord. Amen. Thou hast redeemed us. Amen. Uh, uh, a new song. Now, somebody said, what's that going to uh, be? Well, he told us what some of it's going to be about. I don't know what the exact words are going to be. Uh, uh, but thou art worthy, he said, to open the book. Thou hast redeemed us from every kindred and tongue and nation. Uh, and, and so if you're saved today, uh, you are among the redeemed. You have been bought out. Now, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, first of all, I want to look at what he did. Amen. What he did, he, at first uh, he, he gave himself for us that he might redeem us, the Bible said, from all uh, iniquity. Amen. The person of redemption uh, is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls him by many names. Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, uh, the Prince of Peace. Uh, uh, and it goes on and on and on. There are uh, many, many names for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the person uh, of, the rede uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, redemption. He is the great redeemer. Amen. And uh, listen, in order to redeem something, uh, uh, you have to have the resources. Amen. That was usually my problem in going into uh, the pawn shop was I didn't have the resources. Uh, you know, they would say, we'll make you a deal. Uh, but usually I didn't have the money to buy, uh, uh, you know, what they wanted. They, they wanted too much. Uh, well, listen, I'm talking about somebody who, uh, beloved, has all the resources in the world. Amen. Uh, and uh, listen, uh, only he had the resources to buy us out of the devil's pawn shop uh, because you know what? We were broke. We couldn't buy ourselves out. There's no way man can redeem himself. You say, well, what about the law? Well, guess what? God never intended the law to save us. He intended the law uh, to function like that road sign on the highway that says speed limit 55 or 35 or 45 or curb ahead or whatever. He intended that as a warning. Morning, uh, uh, to us to uh, uh, bring us to himself. Amen. Uh, the law never could redeem us, but uh, uh, Jesus said uh, to uh, uh, the crowd in his day uh, uh, that upon these two hang all the law and the prophets, uh, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Amen. Uh, with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. You can uh, wrap it up, all of it, in those two, Jesus said. Amen. So the person of redemption, uh, amen, that was Jesus Christ. And he's got the resources, amen. And he has the desire. The redeemer, according to the Old Testament, had to have the desire. Amen. To redeem. Now, if you read the story of Ruth, you will find that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, there was another uh, uh, kinsman redeemer that was closer than Boaz, but he passed on the opportunity. He said, I believe I'll pass. He, he didn't uh, have the desire. So Boaz, uh, uh, you know, he, uh, uh, he redeemed uh, 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 the land. A amen. Listen, the price of redemption. Uh, uh, amen. The Bible said he gave himself for us. He gave himself. Uh, the, uh, and it means to commit or to deliver uh, or to strike with the palm uh, of the hand. First Peter put it this way in uh, chapter 1 and verse 18, ye are not redeemed with silver and gold, uh, but with the precious 
blood of the Lamb. That was the price of redemption. Now think about that. It's astounding for a moment if you think about it that uh, we uh, are redeemed with the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Uh, uh, listen, the God of heaven sent his only Son uh, and gave his life that we might have life. Amen. Uh, uh, and there are folks today that still in the devil's pawn shop. Well, listen, they can get out. All they have to do is claim uh, redemption, claim it, amen, for themselves. Uh, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, I not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a difference, amen. Uh, uh, you, anybody believe in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, and believe he was real and believe that he, uh, uh, you know, that he existed and all that, uh, uh, but to believe on him means you're trusting for something, amen. Uh, and the purpose of redemption, the, the word redeem uh, is uh, from the word luthero. It means to uh, ransom, amen, to ransom. Uh, Exodus chapter 6 and verse number 6 said, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you of their bondage, and I will redeem you. Amen. To ransom you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. This is what God told uh, uh, Israel when they were down in Egypt uh, under the hand of Pharaoh. God said, I'll redeem you. I will bring you out of bondage and all the slavery. Uh, uh, and, and then in Exodus 13, he said, And when it shall be, thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this? Thou shalt say unto him, By strength of hand the Lord brought us out from Egypt from the house of bondage. Amen. Uh, uh, and now, you say, well, we're in bondage. We are. Not like uh, Egypt was. We're not, uh, uh, you know, building uh, edifices and we're not doing all that. Uh, but sin is bondage. Sin is slavery. The Bible calls it iniquity or uh, uh, anomia, which is a violation of the law or wickedness. Amen. All people uh, uh, are violators, breakers uh, of the law. Amen. We were born into this world as sin. Uh, and unless we get saved, uh, we're going to die in that condition. Amen. But God sent a redeemer, someone to bring us out. But listen, the thing is, God never forced himself on anyone. Amen. God doesn't want puppets. Amen. Uh, if, uh, uh, if you uh, ask some people, they will. Uh, they have the idea that you know uh, we're going to get saved if we're going to get saved when we're going to get saved. We don't have any idea or anything to do with it, and and God is going to save us whether we want to be saved or not, and all of that. Uh, listen, you can't back that up in the Word of God. If God was going to choose that plan, uh, then in uh, in the Garden of Eden, uh, uh, He would have uh, intervened before Eve could have taken that fruit. He would have said, "Stop." right there you're not taking that fruit she's mine and he would have thrown the devil out of the garden because uh, uh, she would have been uh, 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 God's redeemed and, and Adam would have come running over and said what's happening and God would have said you know the devil was tempting her and I stopped it you're not having that fruit you're staying with me here in the garden uh, and they would have had no choice but God didn't do that God allowed her uh, uh, to go against his will because he gave her free will and he's given you free, uh, free will and me free will and all we have to do uh, uh, in order to get off the devil's shelf in the pawn shop is to accept uh, redemption. Amen. Amen. Slavery. Oh, we hear a lot today about slavery, and there's still slavery going on in this world. Amen. Most of it's connected with the sex trade today. Uh, you know, I read this week about some uh, people being rescued, some young girls being rescued. Uh, uh, they were being held somewhere in a uh, in a place uh, uh, in the ground uh, in uh, in a small uh, facility, and they were uh, 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 holding. They were being held for the sex trade. Uh, men that held them. Uh, listen, uh, and I'm glad they escaped. I'm glad they escaped. Uh, but for every one that escaped, there's probably ten. That hasn't escaped. Amen. Uh, and we'll never be free of this. We'll never be free of this until the Lord comes and sets up his kingdom. The Bible said, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Uh, Jesus prayed, God, uh, 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 bring in the, uh, the kingdom. But the kingdom hasn't come yet, but it is coming. And, and one day we won't have those things to deal with. But while we're here, we have to deal with those things. Can you... Uh, 
Can you imagine somebody uh, or yourself, can you imagine being considered as somebody's property? Can you imagine being considered uh, no better than a sheep or a goat or a cow or a bull uh, to be traded uh, whenever uh, 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 the whim of the owner uh, uh, decided that they wanted to? Can you imagine, uh, uh, you know, if they wanted to feed you, they did. If they wanted to let you go hungry, they did. If they wanted to uh, uh, let you do without clothes, they did. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a terrible thing. Uh, uh, in ancient times, slaves had, <clears throat> had no rights. None. They were essential property of their owner. They were dictated to by their masters. And when they outlived their ability to work, guess what? They were thrown out into the street to die. They were left to die. Uh, and, and that was, uh, you know, a sense of kindness. If they weren't left to die, they were killed and just thrown on the garbage heap. Terrible. I mean, mankind uh, can be terrible. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, things that happen in this world. Well, listen, it's all uh, uh, due to one thing. The Bible said the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen. Uh, listen, you and I were on uh, 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 on the shelf of slavery. We were in sin slavery. And all of us here today, every one of us here today, uh, have been slaves to sin. You say, well, I'm not no slave. Well, listen, if you're lost, you're doing what your master bid. You go where he tells you to go. Uh, and in the end, uh, if you're not saved, you'll be thrown out to die. Now, what's he doing? I'll give you this and I'll quit with this. He's purely unto himself. The Bible said, God hath redeemed us and made us a peculiar people. A peculiar people. Uh, and it means uh, uh, that we are to be cleansed. He, he uh, said he would purify unto himself a peculiar people. The word purify uh, uh, is where we, uh, the word catharizo, it means to cleanse or to make clean or to purify. Listen, uh, uh, he cleansed us from our sin. Uh, uh, let me give you an illustration. Uh, in John chapter number four, the Bible said Jesus uh, must needs go through Samaria. Amen. Uh, now, most Jews in that day didn't want to go through Samaria. If they had to go somewhere that would normally take them through Samaria, uh, they would cross over Jordan and go up uh, on the other side around Samaria and then recross Jordan because they didn't want to go uh, through Samaria. Uh, because there were enmity between the Jews and the Samaritans, all going back to, uh, you know, who took the land first when they came back and uh, whose land was this, and all of that was still uh, going on, you know. And when Jesus went to Samaria, he sent his disciples into town, said, you fellas go into town, i got to meet somebody here. Uh, that woman came. That had been married uh, five times, and the one and the man she was with was not her husband. And she came in the middle of the day to get water, uh, and he began to talk to her and said, "Woman, I can give you uh, uh, water that's not in this well. I can give you water that you'll never thirst again." Amen. He got her interest, uh, uh, but before he got her interest, she uh, she wanted to be argumentative. You know, uh, she said, "I know you're a Jew, and I'm uh, I'm from Samaria. I'm a Samaritan, and uh, you say that Jerusalem." is the place to worship and we say that uh, uh, Mount Gerizim is the place to worship. Uh, Jesus didn't address her on that. Uh, uh, he just brought her back to the point. Amen. Uh, listen, when you deal with somebody who's lost, uh, oftentimes the devil is going to try to get them to sidestep what you're saying or to start an argument and the thing to do is remember, stay on focus. Amen. Uh, stay on focus. Uh, uh, brother, uh, he stayed on focus and he got her interest and uh, she finally said, sir, Give me this water. Amen. He wouldn't talk about water from the well that she drank physically because that would go in and be gone. He was talking about a spiritual water. Listen, there's so many people today that are out there and what they need is spiritual water. You know what our country needs today? It needs spiritual water. 
Amen. We need to turn back to God. We don't need folks out here tearing down buildings and burning buildings and killing folks. We read about killings almost every day. Uh, and we got folks who have these uh, uh, agendas uh, uh, and they're going about doing nothing but destruction and trying to bring it in uh, uh, to the nation that we live in. Uh, beloved, I pray on behalf of our leaders uh, uh, that God would give them the power uh, uh, and give them uh, uh, the tenacity to do what needs to be done, amen, for our nation. We need to pray for our leadership. You say, I don't like them. I don't like all of them either, but I pray for them, amen. Pray for them, amen. John uh, Wesley went to Georgia to minister to the Native Americans thinking that his work would save him. He thought, I'll go do this good work and, you know, that'll save me. On May 24, uh, 1738, he was attending a worship service with the Moravians. John Wesley wasn't sure that he was saved. In his own words, he described the experience like this. He said, in the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street where one was reading Luther's preface to the Epistle to Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Jesus Christ, I felt my heart strangely warm and I felt I did trust Christ, Christ alone for my salvation, and assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Now, he got off the path of, of works and he accepted salvation. Amen. That's what we need. John Wesley, of course, went on to be a great uh, figure in, in uh, religion, a, a great figure in Christendom, and uh, preached uh, 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 to many, many people and won many people to the Lord. Uh, uh, brother, what we have today, uh, there are a lot of folks who uh, uh, they think because they're going to church that uh, is going to save them, that's going to take them to heaven, or because they are a member of a church, or because they give once in a while, or because they're a decent person, or, or whatever, you know. I heard a preacher yesterday talking about uh, uh, somebody that uh, he knew in the community. He said the woman, uh, he said, she's my neighbor. She's a, a good-hearted person. Uh, she gives uh, to the neighborhood, tries to help her neighborhood out. But he said, uh, he said the one thing about her is that she has a filthy mouth. And he said uh, uh, she just really uh, uh, boisterous, has a terrible mouth. He said she'll get outside sometimes and something will happen and she will just let out a string of, uh, of words. And he said just, uh, he said so bad that not only me, but he said the other neighbors complain about how uh, uh, she has such a filthy mouth. But he said how can a, a person with a good heart like that, a, a, a good hearted to her neighbors, uh, have such a filthy mouth? Well, listen, uh, it's because she's never been born again. Amen. Amen. That's what it is. Uh, if you can live in sin, and you can enjoy sin, and you can go on in sin, uh, you are not a child of Christ. Amen. Amen. Sinners, uh, 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 brother, do what sinners do, and that is sin. Now, Christians, uh, folks who are saved and know the Lord, uh, they may stumble and they may have a bump on the radar, uh, but just like the prodigal son who went down to uh, the far country and ended up in the pig pen, he was there, but he didn't enjoy it. Uh, he didn't like it. Uh, and in fact, he said uh, when he came to himself, he said, my father's servants have more to eat than this. I'm going to my father's house. Amen. And so people today, uh, some of them need to check up if they're living in sin and they're, uh, uh, they like it and they stay there and they don't care uh, whether they, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, interact with the Word of God. They don't care about the, uh, the church uh, and they're living in sin. Uh, uh, they better check and see whether they may be like Wesley, John Wesley, and maybe they're not saved. Amen. Redemption, maybe they need to be bought out of the devil's pawn shop. And then the people of redemption, amen, the people of redemption, uh, peculiar, uh, it is, uh, 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 it's beyond, the, it comes from a word that means beyond the scope uh, or unusual, something that's special or one's own, something peculiar or special to you. Well, this we are peculiar or we are special to God. You got something probably in your, maybe on your person, uh, maybe in your house. You have something that belongs to you. It may not mean a hill of beans to anybody else, but to you it means a lot. Uh, you know, my wife got a doll at home that she had when she was a little girl. And, 
And, uh, you know, to me, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a doll, uh, uh, you know, and it doesn't mean anything to me. I, I, you know, I pick at her about it sometime. I'll, I'll tell her, you know, I want you to get that creepy looking thing out of the house. You know, it's always staring at me or whatnot. I, I'm just teasing her. But it means a lot to her. Means a lot to her because when her her dad, uh, uh, you know, was uh, working in the mill, uh, she wanted that doll, and they didn't have money to buy that doll. So, uh, 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 but she ended up with it Christmas time, and, and what she found out was later was that he had gone without uh, 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 anything to drink uh, or to eat at work. He uh, saved all his money so he could buy that doll. So he went without food uh, and drink at work. Uh, to save enough money to buy her that doll so she could have it. So it means something to her. And I understand that. It's a precious thing. Amen. Uh, and, uh, you know, I like to pick, her, pick on her about it, but, but I know it means something to her. I have things like that, too. Uh, but listen, we are precious to God. We are unique to God. We uh, 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 represent something uh, of God's own heart. Uh, listen, uh, uh, a man uh, told a story uh, about a, a person that he knew who loved old books. Now, uh, he, had, uh, he met an acquaintance uh, who had thrown away uh, a Bible that had been stored in the attic of uh, his house, his ancestral home. It had been there for generations. And, and he asked him about it, and the guy said, well, I couldn't read it. Uh, and the friend explained, well, somebody, uh, uh, he said, somebody named Guten something had printed it. And he said, what did you say? He said, yeah, somebody named Guten something or other printed it. And he said, uh, was it Gutenberg? Uh, and uh, uh, he said, well, "We need to find that. Uh, we need to find that book." And so he said, "Well, yeah, it's in the trash. I'll go get it." And they, they went, and, and what they found it, it was one. Of, this Bible was one of the first ever printed editions of the Bible, printed by Gutenberg. And they sold it, sold it for over two million dollars. Amen. Laying around the house. You know, there are probably things like that, uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, his friend uh, said, well, it sold for two, two million dollars. And he said, well, that was uh, 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 that was pretty good. He, and his friend said, well, mine wouldn't have brought uh, uh, such a fine amount. He said, why is that? He said, because somebody had scribbled it. He said some guy named Martin Luther had scribbled all over it in, in German, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, neither one of them knew much about uh, about it. Amen. Listen, uh, uh, the people of redemption. Amen. We are the people of redemption. God has saved us. And then uh, the peace of redemption uh, is that God uh, uh, doesn't give us a license to sin. Now, a lot of folks say that's the thing wrong with you. Uh, uh, you Baptists, you believe you got a license to sin. No, uh, I believe we can sin, uh, but I believe we've got the Holy Spirit to help us keep us not from uh, to sin. Uh, and, and that God changed our nature and that we shouldn't desire to sin anymore. Amen. Now, the problem is we still have the flesh. And the flesh is still there. We've got to deal with him. But let me tell you what. If you sin against God and you're a Christian, you'll know it immediately. The Holy Spirit will snap to your attention and he'll tell you you've done something that you shouldn't have done. I had somebody call me the other day. Uh, and, and I had been talking with them and counseling with them. Uh, and uh, they called me the other day, uh, and we were talking, and uh, they said, you know, uh, if, uh, uh, if I didn't uh, know any better, uh, they said, I believe, uh, you know, I would just burn the house down, you know. And, I, and you know, I said, you don't want to do that. Uh, uh, and it was because uh, they were frustrated, all things going on uh, in their life, and reasonably so. They had a right to be, I mean, just a myriad of things piling up, piling up, piling up. Anyway, we talked about it. I forgot about it, you know, after we hung up. Uh, this person called me a few days later and said, I owe you an apology. I said, for what? You don't owe me an apology. Uh, uh, and they said, yeah, I owe you an apology because uh, I, I said the other day that, that uh, you know, I'd burn the house down. Uh, uh, and uh, they said, you know, I would never do anything like that. I said, I know. We were just talking. I said, here, vent frustration. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Uh, you know, and, and I said, uh, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I've known this person for many, many years, uh, and uh, I didn't think a thing about it. But God had burdened this person's heart about it, and so they called me and said, uh, you know, I've asked God to forgive me. I want to ask you to forgive me. I said, there's nothing for me to forgive. Uh, you don't worry about that. We were just talking. You were venting frustrations. Uh, uh, you said it. Did you feel better? Yes, I did. Well, good. Uh, then I did my job. Amen. Uh, 
I, 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 I said, if I had thought you would really do that, I, then I'd have called the police or the fire department. But I didn't do that because I knew uh, you were just like me. Sometimes you talk and, and say things, you know. Listen, the peace of redemption. God gives us peace even though we're still in this old body. We're in this flesh. Amen. We are his workmanship, the Bible said, Ephesians 2.10, 2, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now, if you take a car and you convert it uh, from diesel to gasoline, uh, then you, you can't go to the pump anymore and put diesel in it. You know, it won't run off diesel anymore. Listen, I, I heard about a guy who bought a car, and, and it was a new car, uh, and, and it was a gas-powered car, and he went to get some gas, and he wasn't thinking, I guess, about what he was doing. He pulled into the gas pump, and, and you've seen these gas pumps that offer both uh, gasoline and diesel at the same uh, station. Instead of grabbing the gasoline, he grabbed the diesel, and he started pumping. I guess he's listening to music or doing whatever, uh, and he filled his tank full of diesel, put it back on the uh, uh, you know, on the hook, jumped in his car, and turned the ignition switch, and guess what? <laughs> and that was it. He had ruined his engine because that diesel went up in there and just ruined everything. He had to have everything replaced. Now, had he uh, realized that before he turned the switch, you know, he'd have been okay. He could have pumped it out, and, and he'd have been all right, you know. Uh, but when he turned that switch and sucked that diesel up into that uh, up into that car, it was done. Listen, our, uh, we won't run on the devil's juice anymore. Amen. The age of man, this uh, dispensation of grace, the time of redemption is coming to a close. So we need to ask ourselves, you know, am I one of the redeemed or am I still in the devil's pawn shop? Amen. Well, if you're trusting in the Lord and you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that you trusted him for salvation. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you have, then that's made a change in your life. Uh, and, and if not, uh, then you need to do that. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. I hope you got something out of the message today. Uh, and uh, you uh, pray for all the sick today. Pray that God would touch them. we got many that are sick. Uh, and some are dealing with uh, things that are really dire. Uh, pray for those that have lost their loved ones. Uh, and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And as we pray and dismiss, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Raymond, uh, would you dismiss us, please, sir? Thank you. Father, Lord, we thank you again today, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you for our place of worship. Again, Lord, we thank you for the message today. Each one of us might take and apply it to our lives and help us, God, in our 